Hey everyone, Jay Rio from ebodyboarding.com and here is the ultimate guide to everything you need to know about swim fins. Swim fins are an integral part of bodyboarding and they are just as important as the board itself. Why? Swim fins are used not only to propel yourself through the water to paddle out and to catch waves, but also to steer and control the board, direction and speed. So let's talk about different types of swim fins. First of all, you can divide fins into two categories. There are symmetric fins, which means you can wear the fin on either your right or left foot. The uh, blade of the fin is even on both fins. And there's asymmetric fins, which have a specific left and right foot fin. So this would be an asymmetric fin. You'll notice the blade is angled outward. Which fin is better? It's really personal preference. Neither is better than the other, but they have some significant features about them. An asymmetric fin will give you a kick that sort of directs your thrust inward or your knees and legs inward. Uh, but you do get this little point that gives you a little added control when you're riding along the wave face. A symmetric fin has a nice even kick because both fins are the same. So you're gonna get a straight on kick and most fins have vertical edges as well, which help to channel the water across them. Drainage is really important on swim fins. So the drainage hole location on a fin will determine how well sand, rock, shells, and water drain out of that fin. I'm a big fan of toe end drainage, and what I mean by that is the holes for the drainage are right at the toe end of the foot pocket. Because when you're kicking along, water flows through and it's gonna run to that point in the foot pocket and then everything drains out. Some fins have center drainage holes. Um, personally, not a fan of that. I don't think they drain as well, but of course, everyone has their own personal preference. Blade length is really important. Uh, the longer the blade, the more power you get out of the fin, but the less quick directional change you can make with the fin. So a medium length blade is usually good for most types of riding. If you're riding in the drop knee stance, you want a shorter blade fin uh, because it's easier to get that fin up onto the, the deck of the board. Uh, but not too short because then you sacrifice power. Flex in the blade of the fin. So some fins have a more flexible blade and some fins have a stiffer blade. That will also determine the amount of power you get out of each kick. If you have maybe a weaker leg or you're new to wearing swim fins, a fin with more flex in the blade is a good idea and you actually get a really good snap out of each kick. So you do still get really good propulsion. If you're stronger in the legs, you have strong calf muscles and your ligaments are good, nice and strong, a stiffer fin's gonna give you more power with each kick. Uh, let's talk about accessories with swim fins. Uh, there's some different accessories that uh, especially newcomers like to use, and this is a fin sock. So essentially this covers everywhere on your foot that the swim fin touches and protects your foot from the fin chafing your foot. Uh, a fin sock is made of neoprene. It's usually two millimeters thick, uh, and it has an open heel, again, to allow drainage or sand and rocks and shells to come out of there so they don't get stuck in there. Fin socks are pretty inexpensive, but they do add about one shoe size to your foot. So factor that in if you're buying fins and fin socks together to buy the fins to fit over the socks. Uh, along those lines, in the winter, if you live in a place where the water gets cold, you will want booties. And these are fin booties. This bodyboarding booty has a nice, soft, pliable sole on it. Makes it easier to fit inside the swim fin. But keep in mind, there's different thicknesses of booties. This happens to be a three millimeter thick booty. If you're in really cold water, you might want a five millimeter booty. And they are blind stitched to keep the water out, but they do add to the size of your foot. So a three mil booty is usually two to two and a half shoe sizes additional when you wear one of these. A five mil booty might be three to three and a half shoe sizes larger. So most likely you'll need two pairs of fins, one for the warm months when you don't need a booty and one for the cold months uh, when, you know, when you need a bigger fin to fit over the booty. So keep that in mind. Let's say you're one of those people that 
is a minimalist. You don't want any of the socks or booties. You're just going barefoot, but your fins are rubbing your feet a little bit. That's where products like this come in. These are basically lubricants with a little bit extra to them. They actually have aloe and other things in them to help heal existing cuts, but they lubricate your ankles and feet from the fins rubbing. So I use this, this is called belly jelly, and uh, I apply this liberally to my feet, especially when I'm in tropical climates, because for some reason, your skin seems to be softer and more susceptible to uh, getting blisters and fin ulcers in the warmer water. So I apply this liberally to my feet before I ever get any cuts, and it sort of keeps the fin nice and smooth rubbing over my skin rather than chafing and driving holes into my skin. So that's a good product to have. Vaseline will do in a pinch as well, or petroleum jelly, something like that. Now let's touch on one more uh, thing, and this is uh, fin tethers. There's three types of fin tethers. Uh, the most basic type would be the string type. Um, so there's a, a bunch of different brands out there, but essentially you need to tie these types of tethers. So there is possibility for failure if you tie them incorrectly. So whichever type you get, look into the proper way to tie these. String type are very basic, they're very cheap, they last a very long time, and they're low drag and lightweight. So I prefer these type, this is basically nylon paracord, and we sell these on ebodyboarding.com. The most popular type would be the Velcro style. There's a ton of different brands of these out there. They're very simple to operate. It's essentially like a surfboard leash. You just undo the Velcro, wrap it around your ankle, and then close it off. And getting out of it is as simple as pulling the little tab to undo it. These are pretty infallible. They're hard to screw up on these. And what happens is when the fin gets blown off your foot, it will dangle from your ankle by these tethers and enable you to pull them back on pretty quickly. Uh, because fins, although they float, trust me, they'll get knocked off in the surf, held underwater, get pushed 100 meters down the coast, you rarely find them. So I always call tethers cheap insurance. And the final kind of tether, this is actually a combination product. This is called a fin cinch. Several brands out there of fin cinches. Essentially it is a Velcro strap that attaches to the back heel strap of the fin, so it protects your heel from chafing from the fin, and it has what I call an instep strap, which is this. So essentially you put your foot into the fin, and you have this strap, and you crank it nice and tight, and that will hold the heel strap against your heel and keep it from coming off in the first place. So this is just another way to uh, get fins to stay on your foot. That pretty much covers it for swim fins, pretty much everything you need to know about swim fins. And uh, if you need more information, you can always check our website and there's other videos on this YouTube channel about swim fins. Thanks. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. You can subscribe to our channel here. Watch more instructional clips right here. And if you want to subscribe to our mailing list, then please check it out in the link below.